Hi, I'm Jeff Rogers with Innovative IDM. Variable frequency drives are probably one of the greatest inventions in modern automation. If you aren't using one of these things yet, trust me, you will be soon. They're always getting less expensive, easier to use, and the applications are, are virtually endless. Now you can control the speed and the direction of a motor and save money at the same time. So these things are very instrumental in a lot of different applications and therefore their uptime is critical. Um, as you may know if you've ever had to replace one before, it can be a little bit cumbersome to replace and it's always really a race against the clock because it almost certainly means that a motor somewhere is not running which is probably meaning some downtime for you. So the first thing that you always want to remember about VFD uptime is that heat is the number one VFD killer or you know, heat's the number one VFD killer for any piece of electronics for that matter, especially VFDs. These components, you got to remember, are, you know, they have high voltage running through them. So it could be, you know, 480, 600 volts if you're, you know, in the Canada market uh, running through them, and they produce a lot of heat. There are fans inside these things that are designed to cool them. They also have massive heat sinks on the back that are um, used for, uh, you know, heat transfer um, to the cabinet or, or surrounding pieces to, to keep them cool. So the one thing you always got to remember is you need to let your VFDs breathe. They've got to stay cool. Um, keep the fans running. Always keep the fans running. The, the, the first thing that you're probably going to see that's going to fail on a VFD is the fan because it's always running. Anytime the VFD is on, the fans are going constantly. So you need to make sure that you have spare fans on the shelf, you know how to replace them. And, and you maintain them, make them part of your preventive maintenance program, check to make sure that they're running. Also, the heat sinks themselves can get very, very dusty, and that dust can build up a lot of that heat so that it can't transfer heat properly and they'll get too hot. Always clean your heat sinks. Number three, the internals of the drive. Because there's fans forcing air through the internals here, dust can build up inside, just like a PC at home. What do you do to mitigate that? Get you a can of compressed air and blow that stuff out of there every now and then. Make sure that you keep a VFD cool and it'll always be happy. Num the number two thing is you want to protect your drives from exposure to uh, heat and uh, contaminants such as dust or particulate that may be in your air because of whatever process is going on in the nearby environment. So, you know, you want to make sure that the cabinet that these are installed in, or at least the environment, the room that they're in, uh, is a controlled environment. Make sure it's not going to get too hot. If you're going to put it in a cabinet, make sure the NEMA or the IP rating of the cabinet is suitable for that environment to keep the contaminants away from getting to this piece of equipment. Um, the third thing that you want to always remember is that you want to always try to use proper electrical filters whenever possible. So there are filters that are designed for use both line side, which is between the power company and the drive, as well as load side, which is between the, the drive and the motor or the load, typically going to be a motor. So there are inductive and capacitive type filters as well as RFI EMI type filters that are designed to help these things, um, help protect them against uh, power spikes, electromagnetic noise that uh, may you know, uh, damage the input or the output side of the drive electronics. So always, always try to use proper electrical filters. May cost you a little bit more in the beginning, but man, you'll be, you'll be a lot better off in the long run because it'll prolong the life of the VFD itself. And the fourth thing is, is that you're gonna always wanna properly maintain the load that this motor is connected to. For instance, if you're not properly maintaining a motor, and the motor burns up and you know the insulation uh, melts inside the motor because it gets too hot maybe you didn't grease a bearing or something like that and it creates a short that short is going to damage the output of this drive and, and could cause the drive itself to fail so always make sure that you're properly maintaining downstream equipment the load that this thing is hooked up to if you have any more questions about this always feel free to contact us um, we have application specialists that can help answer questions as far as how to properly size them, how to properly size the cabinets that they're installed in, the environments that they go in, as well as the uh, electrical filters I mentioned, um, best practices to use um, when installing those. And also you can find a lot of information on our website. Um, innovativeidm.com is where you can find our knowledge center. 
There's going to be white papers, um, best practices listed there that you would want to use when selecting uh, drives and components both upstream and downstream um, from the drive to help increase uptime. After all, Innovative IDM is the home of the legendary customer experience.